Hey, um, this is Late Night Nap. Um, how's everybody? Uh, I know it's been a while since I posted a video. And uh, one of the reasons is because uh, I work. <laughs> and um, I don't have a whole lot of time to post up a whole lot of videos. But this seems like a pretty, pretty, pretty good topic. I want to talk about... Um, Trump and the way he came out and made his remarks about the passing of the late Fidel Castro and uh, Obama and um, me as, as a as a black American because that's what I am um, you have to understand something we as black Americans, uh, we look at things totally different, in a different lens than most white Americans do. And uh, you can take that with a grain of salt however you want it. My channel is pretty much a, a, a channel that I try to, I want to, when I put, when I pull something up, um, <clears throat> I want it to have some kind of... Um, effect on my viewers um, now <clears throat> let's look at this article about the world leaders who weighed in on the death of Fidel Castro now he died November 25th okay it's been a couple days now it's three days ago but I think they said it's gonna be like a nine day morning maybe about a week of mourning for this leader of uh, Cuba now this is not to say anything negative to the Cubans that live here in America I have no no nothing against you guys you feel the way you feel that is your your feelings uh, this is about the remarks of two leaders a present leader that we have at the moment President Obama and um, our next leader elect President Trump the things that he has said or how he came out and I want to show you the difference and this has nothing to do with the masculinity of a person a man who is leader this has everything to do with uh, the character of a leader okay now <clears throat> it says world leaders offered condolences and expressed their feelings over Cuban dictator Fidel Castro's death Saturday morning. President Obama issued a statement Saturday morning. Today we offer condolences to Fidel Castro's family and our thoughts and prayers are with the Cuban people. Now, there are two different there are two different types of ideology right now going on. The people who saw their leader Fidel Castro as a human being, someone who cared about his country and his people. And then there are people who felt like, well, he did not care anything about his people and was just outright selfish. Kind of the same feelings that we have about President-elect Trump. Hmm? Some of us Americans really don't like Trump but we had to pick between the lesser of two evil, evils they say but I didn't do that I've always been an independent I never did like the Democratic Party or the Republican Party because I always felt that they played toward whatever party they felt and not they didn't play or they did not think about the, the people and, and see, you have people like that in the world who feel that way, especially in America. And the reason why I'm saying this, and I'm bringing this up, is because I want to talk about just how Obama comes out. And he, he literally, as the leader of the United States of America, as the president of the United States, the present president of the United States of America, he comes out and he says this. Today, we offer our condolences to Fidel Castro's family. 
and our thoughts and prayers are with the Cuban people, no matter how he feels about the man. He didn't live under his regime. He doesn't have relatives under his who lived under his regime. So he stayed neutral. Neutral as a leader. That's what you call good wisdom. And also a man of high intellect. He understands. An educated man. In fact, Fidel Castro was an educated man himself. Don't get it wrong. This was not a man who was just a brutal dictator as Trump called him. Okay? And Trump never lived under his regime. Okay? He never lived under his regime. In fact, I don't even believe Trump ever went to, Tr to Cuba before. Did he ever visit Cuba before? Probably not. So everything that he says is, well, hearsay, because he didn't experience it. And the difference, the difference between him and Obama is like night and day. For nearly six decades, the relationship between the United States, this is, this is Obama continually, this is remarks from Obama. For nearly six decades, the relationship between the United States and Cuba was marked by discord and profound political agreements. Now, he, this is still a neutral statement. He said, marked by discord and profound political dis disagreements. Like we all have political disagreements. Like I definitely don't agree with everything that Trump said politically. And I don't, and I know some of you Trump supporters don't believe or don't agree with everything that I believe in politically. Like I believe in, uh, for instance, let's take for example, I, I totally believe in, uh, uh, universal health care. I believe it's time that the U.S. stepped their game up and we need universal health care. Right now, I do not have health care. I'm not even going to go into that right now because that's another story. And don't even come to my channel and put remarks down on my channel telling me, well, you, you should have signed up for Obamacare. I didn't want Obamacare though. I'm a veteran of the United States. I'm a veteran. Someone who uh, is a former member of the United States military. So I go to the to the to the, to, to the VA. So okay. So I guess I guess I do have health care if you look at it that way in that sense. But I'm talking about I'm not a, a, a member of any like like Medi Medicare or Obamacare. You know, I, I don't have that. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. Let's go back to his statement. Political disagreements. What's wrong with that? He's not taking sides. He is not taking sides. He's not saying that, okay, this is... Okay. Sorry for the interruption. He didn't say, like, this is how I feel. Okay. He just made a statement about, a neutral statement about discord and profound political disagreements. During my presidency, we have worked hard to put the past behind us. Okay. This is a man who has gone over and sat down and had political talks with the Castro family in person. Has Trump done that yet? No, he has not. He has not. What does that say about him? Is What does that even, what does, what, what does that give, what does that send out to the people of Cuba, to the, to, to, to the family of Fidel Castro? Now, let, let me, let me put it this way. It sends out bad implications that when he is man becomes president, I'm talking about Trump, when he becomes president, he is going, he already in his mind, he does not like, or he did not like Fidel Castro. He's sending out, he's sending out, uh, uh, um, uh, is an image already that he's saying that, look, I'm tougher than Obama. I didn't like Fidel Castro, and I personally said it, 
you know, calling him a brutal dictator. But yet, if you ask Trump to expound on the history of Cuba, I bet you he wouldn't be able to do it. Everything that he ha he has, all his biases are most likely uh, uh, personal biases and only hearsay biases. Now, let's go down further. President Donald Trump struck a more defiant tone in his statement today. The world marks the passing of a brutal dictator who oppressed his own people for nearly six decades. Really? Okay. How do you know that? It, uh, how do you know that is truly factual? Hmm? Unless you know a Cuban that has lived there and has experienced that for themselves or had family members that experienced that. And I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but what does that make Trump look like? Someone might say, well, it makes him look strong. He looks like a, a leader that don't take no bullshit. You know what it looks like to me? It sounds like a man who's supposed to be, who is going to be our next president, who is going to be our next world leader of the free world. It makes him look like somebody who doesn't know how to take, who does not know how to stay neutral. A man who does not understand that there are biases throughout the world, that people everywhere are going to have their opinion about a leader. They're going to have their opinion about Donald Trump like I do. But the difference is a lot of things that Donald Trump said, I can prove it because it's been televised. Okay, televised, recorded in history. Now, unless you show me footage like the footages that we have seen of Jews being slaughtered by the Nazis, then I am only going on hearsay as a, a black American. See, I don't have family in Cuba. So I'm going to stay neutral. I didn't live under his regime. So I'm going to stay neutral. Just like President Obama did. He stayed neutral. He's uh, still a young man, Obama. Uh, in the sense of he's only in his 50s. So he's not that old. He had to stay neutral. Trump, 70 years old. Younger than Fidel Castro. Much younger than Fidel Castro. Castro was 90. Okay. So you see where I'm going with this? Maybe you're not sure. Maybe your intellect is not strong enough to understand where I'm going with this. Maybe you're missing what I'm trying to say. Maybe you don't care because your own biases are in the way. Now, Trump is friends with Putin. Now watch. Now, Cuba has been allies to Russia for many, 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 many years and still are. And still are. Did you hear what I say? A communist country. Russia and Cuba are still allies. Now, will that be an issue between Trump and Putin? Because Trump likes Putin. Trump is somewhat friends with Putin, isn't he? Isn't he friends with the leader of Russia? Watch how I break it down to you. Let's move on down past, um, you know, he goes on, Trump goes on to say, you know, Trump said Fidel Castro's legacy is one of firing squads, death, unmanageable, suffering, poverty, and denial of fundamental human rights, he said. Denial of fundamental human rights, he said. Okay. I'm not going to, just his statement alone makes him a, a, a leader that I would be afraid to uh, wonder what kind of leadership this man is going to bring to the United States. Now watch his, his friend. Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, sent a telegram to Raul Castro, hailing Fidel Castro, 
as a symbol of a whole era of modern world history, saying he was a wise and strong person who was an inspiring example for all countries and peoples and a sincere and reliable friend of Russia. Russia's Prime Minister, Dmitry Medvedev, I'm not sure if I pronounced it right, said in part, without exaggeration, a whole era of history is gone with, with Fidel Castro. Now, the way Vladimir Putin puts it is extremely, totally different than Trump. You see what I'm saying? Vladimir Putin did not even say anything, didn't describe Fidel as a brutal this and a brutal that and firing squads this and, and all that. You see the difference between leaders, true leaders? See, Trump is a businessman. Businessman who who does not have any any experience in the political realm. He did, he even uh, had four deferments. Trump had four deferments. Four deferments from the from the military, getting out of the Vietnam War. Yeah, your precious leader, Vladimir Putin, military. We know he was part of the KGB. Vladimir Putin was in the in the in the, the military, and he has education. Next, uh, and we also know that Fidel Castro has he was an educated man. He had law. I think he I think he uh, majored in. Um, he went to the University of Cuba or uh, their university and studied law, and also served in the military. Okay, he even said he got into politics uh, once he started studying law. He became very, Fidel Castro became interested in politics when he started studying law. So there, you have two leaders of communist countries that were both, two leaders, I'm referring to Putin because he was, he also was in the Russian military, and um, I'm sure he has, I didn't look up uh, his education background, but I'm sure he has education. And um, you have Fidel, was in the military, and he also has a background in law, or a former education. So Fidel Castro was not stupid. Fidel Castro survived 600 and something assassinations on attempt assassination attempts on his life. You need to do your research before you start blabbering out all kinds of things that you don't know about somebody. Now, do I have differences with this man? I have no idea. I did not live in this country. I did not live under his regime, but and, 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 you know, and for you have to be cautious. If you're going to be a leader in the world, you need to watch your words. Especially if you want to stay neutral. Now, apparently he's not, he doesn't want to be neutral. America has always had, uh, uh, has always disagreed with um, uh, Cuba because of their communism. Now, when Fidel Castro became uh when he became got into power um it said that he did uh take over the u.s uh businesses that were there within his country and rightfully so because that's his country i mean being the, the leader of his country he was going to do that uh, he was not going to allow them to tell him what to do in his own land. So, therefore, uh, whether you agree with him politically 
or not, um, that's where he was looking at. You have to understand, you have to understand, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to justify his wrongs. I'm just saying from his eye, from his point of view as a leader, this is what he was probably looking at. And so, you know, the United States decided to, um, well, they've, they've been, they've been non-allies of Cuba since because of that issue. And that was way back in 1960, 60 something when Fidel took power. Okay. So because of that, it seems that the U.S. wants every, if, if, if the U.S. can't have their way and the U.S. tried to kill Fidel Castro, they did. Because why? They wanted to impart democracy into uh, Cuba. Hey, who am I? You have to talk to the leaders. And if the leaders that are in power there in your country um, have a different political view, who are we, you know, to tell them how to run their country? Now, personally, I don't believe in causing uh, uh, my people to suffer. Um, I don't believe in causing um, um, humanity to suffer behind a family dynasty. Um, but when, uh, when things like that happen, then you have to rely on other countries to help you out. So until there is proof, um, why should the U.S. invade Cuba? Hmm? Why should the U.S. invade Cuba? Hmm? To me, it's all speculation. Now, yes, you have Cubans that have moved, who have moved or who have come to America, and a lot of them did because of that, because he took them businesses. And he used them business. Uh, he took a lot of their profits. Um, a lot of the profits they said that the businesses were making. He allowed them to stay in business, but a lot of the percentage of the profits that they made were going back to his, to I guess to fund his regime. So you can't blame people who own businesses to be upset. A lot of the Cubans left Cuba to come to America. But it's funny how the Americans allow the Cubans, now I'm trying to be neutral here, to come to America. But yet at the same time, they had a problem with Haitians coming to America. Why is that? Ah, don't answer that. Because you and I are going to differ in that political view. We are. Me being a dark-skinned black man, and, you know, yes, I know you have dark Cubans, but um, you have white Cubans, too. So, is it because of the skin color? Hmm? I mean, we can play this game back and forth, day and night, and you can deny it all you want to, but America, I've lived in America all my life, and I know what the history of my people is with America. And some people call America the greatest country in the world. And you know what? I do believe it's the greatest country in the world because for so long we have thrived in America, black people. We have thrived in America with everything that has happened to us. Not to belittle anybody else. Not to belittle any other minority group that has suffered. But we as black people in America, we have a lens that we look through too. Things that have happened to our people, people like us. Not we're not talking about like this generation of blacks. We're because there's there's a different thing that happened to this generation of blacks. This generation of blacks have seen their kind shot down in the streets like dogs. Whether they were criminals or not, they still deserve the right to have a trial, not a trial of execution on the spot. Okay, but anyway. Just 
this is the reason why I made this video. I made this video because I, mean, I want you guys to think, anybody who views this, I want you to think more about what you are saying. Because Trump didn't think when he just tweeted out there, you know, this was a brutal leader. You know, you know what? As hard as we and as 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 hard it is to imagine the man had a family. So there had to be some type of compassion there for him to to to, to you know or um you know when you have your own family you have to there's a part of you that has to sh have some type of humanity to it but that's that's not necessarily always true so you know trump has a family but do we a lot of us look at him as you know as some of us we look at him side eyed because you know you got people who don't really trust trump some say they trust him i don't trust him and for that reason alone i'm not surprised the way he responded it didn't surprise me that he came out like that that he said the things that he said about Fidel Castro, you know. Now some people are gonna agree with him and some aren't. But that's the mentality of a lot of Americans that have run this country. They are quick to denounce everything else that someone else does that does not line up with what they say, that what they politically believe. But then at the same time, that they, they cannot look into the mirror at themselves and reflect on the atrocities of America and what they have done to black Americans here. See, America needs to check themselves, put themselves in check because they think that they are the only ones that have a right to believe and have a right to judge and they're not. And this is a person coming from someone who has served his country honorably. But I have also known, I also know the history behind my country too. And the atrocities that have happened to us and continue to happen to us. Have they done anything to help the Michigan people, the people in Michigan? Because a lot of, because that territory, there's a lot of black people in that area where the pipe, where the water pipes line up there is bad. What are they doing to help the Native Americans? They want to run a pipeline through their reservation. See, these are the things that America needs to take care of in their own backyard instead of pointing fingers. So Trump has a heavy load to carry, being the next president. And he doesn't seem like he's getting off to a really good start by making statements about a former leader who he only he had made, he, those are only assumptions. He can't prove that. He cannot prove that. Do you know why Fidel Castro became got into power? Do you know why? He also did good to his country too, for his country. Now you may not like communism, but that is up to the people to 